Hello, today I want to talk about something called the courage of the lone dissenter. Now, I think it's a concept that we can use to actually bring positive change, change to this world. Now, all over the world right now, there's huge disenchantment with the economies of every country and with the governments of every country. And this was reflected in this visualization that basically charted all the protests all over the world. Now, some people say this visual, visualization is not really that accurate because I'll say there's like hardly any protests represented in Chile during the 1970s when people were protesting Pinochet all throughout the country. So people from all regions of the world kind of chimed in and said, hey, there's huge protests going, in our, going on in our country during these years and seems to be absent from your visualization. But when I looked at the methodology of this person that created this visualization, he basically said he just took headlines from uh, mainstream global media distribution outlets. So that's why a lot of protests are underrepresented, uh, underrepresented in his visualization because the truth of the matter is a lot of protests are censored by the mass media so they don't make it to the global headlines of media that he was searching to create this visualization. Another example of this is just I had a friend recently that said she wanted to go visit Cambodia, probably want to avoid Thailand because of all the protests going on in Thailand right now. And I said, hey, did you know there are massive protests going on in Cambodia that are quite violent right now? And she had no clue. So again, another example of how the media just fails to report or censors uh, uprisings of the people against governments and bankers worldwide. So in, in any uh, event, what this visualization does is it it's underrepresents the true amount of protest, which is even crazier to think about when you watch this. So the problem I see with a lot of these protests around the world are that these protests, while valid, are not addressing the root cause of these problems, so they'll bring about no sustainable positive change for their communities and for the greater community of their country. So I basically see it as a role of the lone dissenter to plant that seed of dissent, which is very different than dissension, because dissent can cause abused in a judicious manner can create harmony because when dissent basically gets a protest that is off track, back on track and focused on the right goals can be a very powerful positive tool. So all around the world I see a lot of protests that are off track not addressing the criminal money changers in their country and without addressing this you can't. It's like people that try to uh, say oh I want to solve poverty, I want to solve, solve global hunger but never talk about how fractional reserve banking makes it impossible, literally impossible for those that are earning two or three dollars a day to ever get out of poverty. So if you don't address the cause of poverty, throwing $10 million, even if you're a celebrity, donating that money is not going to, it can save several thousand lives for now, but there's billions that are still going to starve in the future because you're not addressing any sustainable change for the future, only change now for the you know next foreseeable year or several years that can save a few people, but you really want to get to sustainable change, which I think is the goal of all these protests, is that you need uh, a lone dissenter out there to be courageous enough to plant that seed to get these protests back on track. So I still think people are failing to connect the dots. So in reality, 
when they protest a, a vague concept like government corruption because governments, the status quo, their equilibrium is to gravitate towards corruption. So what is that telling us that everyone in the world doesn't already know, right? But you got to attack the root cause of that problem and people aren't getting that the root cause of that problem are the immoral bankers that control the monetary supply because the bankers control the politics in your country. So if you don't get rid, if you don't throw out the bankers in your country, then you throw out who you think is the corrupt government, a politician, the corrupt bankers, criminal bankers are just going to put another corrupt politician that bows down and kisses their feet in place and sell you some BS propaganda that they're here to make life better for everyone. That is not true. So people are failing to connect the dots. And what I'm really sick of in a lot of these protests are the people that are wearing their nationalistic pride and all waving these flags around saying, I want a better future for my kids. I want a better future for my country. But there's millions of charlatans among these protesters because what they're really saying is I will support any corruption as long as that corruption benefits me. What's in it for me? So it's not about what's best for the country. It's just human nature. As long as I can benefit from it, screw everyone else in the country. I don't care. Now, this is precisely where the power of the lone dissenter comes into play. Because I made another video, which you can look and check in the video description below, in which I talked about if gang, your gang affiliations are clouding your ability to think clearly, which I think is a case for almost all of us, yours truly included, until we see that that's happening, then we can break away from that. There is power, extreme power in a lone dissenter, especially when a group is engaging in groupthink and there is no one dissenting. And that was particularly true. And it can be the difference between life and death, both literally and allegorically. It can be the difference between your financial life and financial death. It can be the difference between your actual life and your actual death. So if we take 9-11 as an example, when the first tower, first plane hit the North Tower and people heard that tremendous crash, they started going down the second tower, the South Tower, and exiting the building. Because mo most people have enough common sense to know that a huge airplane cannot possibly get that far off track, especially with autopilot, um, computer programs to keep them on track, even if the pilot was drunk or fell asleep, they're not going to crash into a massive building accidentally. So the people in the South Tower started leaving. Now there was an announcement made over the PA system that said, this tower is stable, everything is okay, go back to work. And I'm going to put the link to the article below so you can see that this actually happened. Now there have been plenty of studies that have shown, now some people actually turned around and started going back to their office. They're exiting and they actually turned around. But when they met other people on the way back up to their office, who said, are you crazy? Get out. That was the lone dissenter they met because it might have been a group of them that all thought the same way. Okay, everything's okay because no one dissented in their group. They met a lone dissenter. It changed the whole complexion of that group and they left and they exited and they lived. And for people that were possibly with a group of five, six, seven, co-workers and none of everyone listened to that voice of authority in the sky that told them to go back to their office that everything is okay well those are the people that that among all the people that died I'm sure there were people like that so amongst different gangs whether your gang is your socioeconomic class whether it's your political party affiliation whether uh, it's your race whether it's your nationality it's always important for good people to speak up because it is a silence of good people that could be the lone dissenter that actually allows bad things to take place all the time. If you look at say US Congress, there's 535 people and there's not, at least I never hear about in the media if there is, you never hear about single lone dissenters in senior positions. I'm not talking about junior congressmen, I'm talking about senior congressmen that is on some important committee like the intelligence committee or the finance committee that actually speak out and say, hey, look, all of you are acting in the most despicable, immoral manner. Because if that just one lone dissenter stood up, then perhaps he would kick some intelligence and some sense into the rest of his fellow congressmen. But when they think like a gang, 
and good people don't speak up, bad uh, decisions are made time and time and time again. So I see the power of the loan dissenter being critical in the banking industry because there are many good people that remain silent that know that they, because they've been educated, they've been awakened over the past several years since 2008, that the banking industry, fractional reserve banking, central banks, and the, these big commercial banks are systemically in the moral system that just transfers wealth from the citizens of a nation to a very few people. That's how 85 people can have as much wealth as three and a half billion. That is ludicrous. That's how it happens and they act as enablers. So if one person, just one person had the courage to stand up and walk away from his banking career, he would undoubtedly spur conversations among his colleagues and people would undoubtedly come over and say, hey, why are you leaving after all these years? And he can explain it. Sure, some people will shut off their ears because you know, there are always people that want to keep making lots of money and they don't want to know the truth, so they just shut their ears off to the truth. But there are other people that will listen and there are other people that will also walk away. And one person, loan dissenter, can then become five loan dissenters. That can become a hundred loan dissenters. That can become a thousand dissenters. And it's no longer loan dissenters. That become a million dissenters. And if people walked away, that is how you affect positive change and that's why it's necessary for good people to have the courage to exert their power as a lone dissenter and to speak up and not remain silent. We look at someone like Edward Snowden. You know when people say one person cannot make a difference. You know who the only people that say that are? The only per people that say that are are the people in power that want you to be their slave. They don't want you to believe that you actually have any power. So when people hear that because, uh, you know, you, you hear a lot of times people say, I'm just one person, I can't make a difference, so I'm not even going to try. That's what the people in power want you to think. But it's untrue. Look at how Snowden has changed the entire landscape for U.S. technology companies alone. Because of what came out of the PRISM program, everyone knows Google, Yahoo, Facebook, um, Microsoft now all deliberately gave the NSA backdoors to all their software so they could spy on everyone that uses their technology. So now what has happened? Techno no one trusts US technology companies anymore because of one person. For example, Cisco sales in China have already cratered by 10%. They're probably going to crater more because no one wants to do business with a dishonest liar like all the CEOs of these companies are. So. And look at uh, Germany and Google. Germany has come out and said, hey, we should probably build our own internet. Screw Google. We don't want Google anymore. So one person can make a difference. Now, you probably don't want to end up like Edward Snowden, never having the opportunity to talk to your family anymore, having to flee to another country that will protect you. But what the Lone Dissenter really does is he just opens up the eyes of people to reality, to truth. Some of your friends may be blinded by think they, things they think are right. They think they're fighting for integrity. They think they're fighting for truth, but they're just fighting for corruption that supports them. So if you open up their eyes, then they can really, in the end, I think people really do want true positive change for everyone in the country. And I really don't think everyone, there are always people that are selfish and just going to be about me, 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 me. I mean, there's plenty of examples in the banking industry of people that are just greedy bastards that only care about themselves and they could care less about destroying the lives of thousands of other people. So there are always going to be people like that of every race, culture, religion. So, but I think for the most part, the majority of people are good people. So if you open up their eyes, they will want to do what's best for the country, the, for the future of everyone. And that's the point people need to connect the dots. The only way they'll be able to connect the dots to protest the true corruption in their country, which is the criminal banking system, the systemic criminality of the global currency system, the global banking system, is for there to be loan dissenters to pop up everywhere and for people to have the courage to tell people you're protesting the wrong thing. So for people that are really sincere about wanting to do the best thing for whatever group they're leading, whether it's a uh, protest group, whether they're leader of a protest group, whether they're leader of a country, prime minister or president, 
whether they're the CEO of the company, they're leading a corporation, every one of these people should have a lone dissenter amongst their close circle of advisors. In other words, a person whose only job it is is to dissent with every single thing you say. Why? Because when people surround themselves with yes men and yes women, which a lot of leaders do today, they just surround themselves with people that are going to tell them exactly what they want to hear. That, oh, we think your ideas are great. We support everything you say. That inevitably always leads to the worst possible solution because a lot of people don't want to hear any dissension. But what dissension does, this is what I learned and probably from one of the few classes I took through my entire educational career that actually even taught me anything. And to this day, I still remember the professor's name, which was Mercedes Linde Oriarte, because she taught me the power of dissension because I took this very small class with only about 12 students. And 11 of the students were like liberals or Democrat in their political leanings. The only one was like a diehard Rush Limbaugh type conservative. And every time this person said something, although some things were ridiculously wrong, he did have valid points in other things. But every, all the other them people would just roll their eyes and say, here he goes again, just saying stupid stuff. But when the, the professor saw that people's attitude attitudes were that way, she interrupted the class and said, look, that person who everyone in this class <laughs> dislikes is the most valuable asset of this class. And she said, why? Because he is the only person that is forcing all of you to validate your own opinions, to critically think, and to defend your positions. Because without him, you would just be a bunch of robots disagreeing with each other and no one being forced to defend their position or critically think whether their position is right or wrong because you just would all agree with each other. So that is the role that every leader in this world should have. They should have a little dissenter by their side that disagrees with, every, even if they agree with you, that disagrees with everything you say that challenges your position so you can refine your thought processes, you can refine your critical thinking, you can uh, consider all the alternatives, all the other options, and therefore come to the best conclusion. Okay, so that's my point today. Again, please don't forget to comment below. Love to hear your comments as always. Uh, don't forget to click subscribe if you want to hear of uh, when we release future videos. And as always, remain intensely curious. Thanks for watching. Until next time, so long.